So today we here with somebody that I've been wanting to interview for quite a while. Man, we here with Sherm Sticks. That's S H E R M S T X. Say it, don't smoke it. Man, how you come up with your name? Shit. Really, you know what I'm saying? It's been years me making music. Um, you know, I, I, I went from, I had this name when I was younger, P. Cliff. Then I went to my original, my actual name. You know what I'm saying? Not gonna put that out like that. But uh, <laughs> um, I wanted something that meant something to me. Something that also people could relate to. So, Sherm Sticks is, you know, S-H-E-R-M-S-T-X. Um, and, the, you know, S-T-X stands for setting the example. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to set an example for my people. You know what I'm saying? That's not like necessarily mean being perfect or being like, you know what I'm saying? The poster boy, but just like being a leader, doing what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, bro. That's how I came up with that shit. Man. Wait, why you say say it, don't smoke it? Say it, don't smoke it because <laughs> Sherm sticks like that's motherfuckers. Some motherfuckers don't know, but a lot of people know that. That's a fucking drug, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's PCP, bombing fluid, like, wrapped up in a cigarette. That shit get motherfuckers high. 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 Like, tripping high, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what I feel like my music does and will continue to do for the masses eventually, you know? So. Alright, so, man, I've been listening to your music for like four or five years, man. I think I seen you the first time you performed like at the Green Elephant. Mm -hmm. So, how's been your music journey so far? Shit, bro. Cause you said you started as a kid. When did you start making music? When I was eight. When you were eight? Eight years old. I, uh, um, my dad, he actually, well, it was probably like a little before that. You know what I'm saying? You in, in the lunch room, banging on the tables and shit, writing little raps. So like, that's, Probably like seven, six, seven, eight, where I, how I started, um, just writing little raps, and I remember like, um, just had a laptop. I would just record shit on, like, just like through the through the laptop. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was eight, and then I stopped until I was eleven, and that shit was always on my mind from eight years old to eleven. Shit, I feel like I was born to make music just because, like, early on I was hella into Michael Jackson, Kanye West. It's like certain things that I remember that just like, um, you know, was, was instilled into me. My mom, she was a singer songwriter. My, both my grandpas, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, and then at 11, I had got sick at school. So I left and I was out for a whole week. And then during that week, my sister was bringing her, one of her boyfriends over and he used to make music and he had this like USB mic and he just gave that whole to me. And I'm like, okay, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Found this little weird ass editing software I can make music on for free and just start putting out YouTube videos and the school was going crazy, middle school, you know what I'm saying? And then I remember making a mixtape, selling a mixtape for $2 a pop, made $100 off that shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, shit was, shit was dope, shit was dope. So I, I want to talk to you, talk about like your actual music, but before that, man, you got some shows coming up, so what's up with that? All right, so uh, next weekend, shit, next week the 23rd? Uh, I think today, like the 9th, so I think two weeks. Two weeks, okay, so I'm tweaking. My shit, yeah. Uh, April 23rd, I'm going to Houston um, to perform at this like o Ocean Festival. Um, it's just going to be dope. Um, I got like... 10, 20 minutes set. And then we got to that, I'm gonna be on a festival for what, the Midway Run Festival with Galaxy 9. Uh, Bebe gonna be there from K104. Uh, Twister gonna be headlining. Lil Kiki gonna be headlining. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good ass show, you feel me? I'm blessed for sure, so. Yeah, I Speaking about shows, man, how was your show with Jay Electronic? <laughs> Crazy, bro. That the energy at that show was was some I don't think I've ever really felt before. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause motherfuckers was there for rap, and all I had to do is come and rap. But I feel like I do that very well, and also my stage performance is fire as well. So 
I did what I had to do, you know what I'm saying? I had to look up a, a, like a, uh, I did a Nas remix to, fuck, what was that song called? Uh, in White State of Mind. So I started off with that. Motherfuckers was not expecting me to come on stage with that. And I was the last performer right before um, J Electronica. So it packed, you know what I'm saying? Fucking at, up top they were packed and shit. It was, it was crazy, bro. Like, dream come true for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, man. So you just recently dropped Cabin Fever. Mm-hmm. So, the Cabin Fever EP, you know what I'm saying, that shit, I mean, if you know what Cabin Fever is, and that's just just being stuck in the crib and going crazy, you know what I'm saying, I feel like, I think I, I dropped that last year, so this 2021, um, you know, motherfuckers were still going through COVID restrictions and getting sick, and the shit was closed down, and... Everybody was going crazy, I feel like. Just being stuck in the crib, needing some sunlight, needing to work out, eating, so. And also what I went through and I feel like a lot of people went through and a lot of black people went through is the fact that this just showed that the government didn't give a fuck about us. You know what I'm saying? They was giving us money, but we still had to pay rent. They wasn't even giving us some, enough money. We still had to pay rent. We still had to get food. We still, and a lot of people couldn't even do that. You know what I'm saying? Then kids still had to, you know, eventually go to school. But then they had to go to school from home. I remember being in school because I was in college. I was like, going to college, bro. And I have a piano class. This motherfucker expected me to put my big ass piano up and ha- be on video camera. I'm like, I'm not doing that shit. Like, I said, no, nah, and nah, I low-key dropped out of school right then and there. I was like, fuck that. <laughs> Didn't go back. <laughs> like, like, fuck that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pay bills, make sure my mom, my sister, and my niece straight. But you want me to put my fucking lap, my fucking piano up and play on that bitch and look at you and you. Fuck that, bro. Like, niggas trying to eat. You know what I'm saying? Niggas trying to have somewhere to sleep. So, yeah, bro. That, that whole tape just went from the frustration of, like, what was going on at the time, self-explanatory, you know what I'm saying, so, and I'll I be giving long ass explanations as well, so. That's how good, that's how good, more detail there. Hell yeah. Man, so, in your music, you're like, you really rap deep, mm-hmm. you be talking about like your life a lot, and just like, stuff that happened, so like, what, what inspires you to make music, like, what, what has to happen for you to put out like a project or a body of work or a single? Um, shit, bro. That shit just gotta be raw and real. Like, I really gotta, I gotta feel some type of, like, real life shit in order for me to drop a song, for me to um, drop a project, especially, because if I'm finna drop a project, that shit gotta be thought out. You know what I'm saying? I want I want the, the listener to really feel like they're with me in those moments. You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of my music just come from just pain and trying to um, alleviate my body from that pain, you know what I'm saying, and just like get those thoughts out of my head, you know, just heal, you know what I'm saying, so it's just my way of healing, and also not just my own healing, allowing my family to heal as well, because I feel like if I put certain things in songs that the people around me know is true, and if it's about them or whatever, they can listen to it and reflect on it as well. You know what I'm saying? And be like, damn, that's how he looks at it. And they can just heal within themselves as well. It, it's, it's all out in the forefront. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, bro. It's pain, really. And But but now I'm realizing it's not just pain. You know what I'm saying? It's happiness. It's all the things that come with life. Even the, the good things that happen and the bad things that happen. That's the shit. Life in general is where I get, you know, my inspiration. Oh, you got any artists that inspire you? Big artists, small artists, it don't matter? It don't matter. Shit. For sure, big, start with big artists. Kendrick, Cole, shit. I say Drake, um, Nas, Jay, Lil Wayne, shit, Tame Impala. They go crazy. <laughs> Tame Impala go crazy, bro. Uh... Shit, bro. 
I mean, those those are the artists just from for Kanye for sure, like Kanye for sure. Um, then just like you know, my brothers, KYD inspires me every time I listen to his music. Um, my homeboy Savior, he inspires me every time I listen to his shit. You know, and that's that's really it. Oh, my homeboy Jake too. My homeboy Jake, he go crazy. He he inspires me as well. For sure. Speaking about like you and rapping with your homies and everything, uh, what came together with like the whole like Dreamers tapes and like the Dreamer um, what is it like mini festivals that y'all were putting together and like performances and stuff? Bro? Um, so my homeboy Dono, shout out to him, uh, Donovan Bogney. Uh, we were just like hella young and trying to do some different shit that we felt like people our age wasn't doing. And he brought the idea to me, cause that man, he's a, when it comes to business and it comes to getting ideas out, he is crazy with it. He know exactly what he want to do and how he want to do it. So, you know, me and him actually, it's crazy cause me and him had actually went to this uh, party. I forgot the DJ, the DJ party we went to. Oh, DJ Sober. We went to a DJ Sober party. Um, in Oak Cliff at this like fucking penthouse and shit um, and we were just trying to infiltrate the city just get in however we can so we were just up in that hole just dancing around and shit trying to like looking at everybody like oh yeah you gonna go talk to him you gonna go talk to him alright I'll go talk to him type shit like just net trying to network and figure this shit out and then after that party we um, shit went we're just walking around like a little strip and we went into this a record store called Top Ten Records, and we started talking to her and shit. And she was talking about how she'd be having people come in and do shows. So, um, yeah, that's that's really how those shows came about. Um, Dream Fest, is, you know, that's that's what's called. But um, yeah, he brought that idea to me, and he was just like, "Let's do it." So we just did it, and we were just trying to start our own network. You know what I'm saying? And if we can't get on these shows. We gonna create our own, right. you know what I'm saying? Ownership. We gonna have our own shit, and that you know, and we hit that hole. He we did like three, three different dream fests and shit. Hopefully we bring, gonna bring that shit back. But you know, niggas just working and trying to figure this shit out. So. All right. So, um, man, how I forget dude's name? Your producer. Kilo. Kilo. Whoa, who, who no, no, which no, no, one? No. You you're talking about T? Composed T, by yeah, T. Yeah, T. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, hey. nigga go crazy. Shit, high school, bro. Like, probably about, we knew each other, but about 11th grade, that's when we had a class together, and he made beats, and I rap, and you know what I'm saying? He was looking for somebody to give his beats to. I was looking to hop on somebody's beats, so we linked up and just, you know, started a conglomerate and started a brotherhood for sure. That's Shout out to Capone by T. That's my that's my brother for real. Um, um, but yeah, bro, like it was just genuine, and me and him was like, we got okay. We didn't have a studio to record at, so it was me and him came up with the idea to get like all of our friends to pitch in for all this studio equipment and shit like that. So we hit that hole, and then everybody was basically using the studio, and we just. It was a vibe, and we didn't make. I know the song you fuck with the most, and uh, that's more love. <laughs> more love go crazy. More love go crazy, and like I remember when he made that beat, bro. I was in the studio like this shit crazy. I think I have, still have videos on my phone of him making that beat, bro. He's just that man. He's a different beast. He's a different fucking beast, bro. Cause he really composes them shits, all them sounds. And those songs that me and him made, he literally sat there and just played them bitches. You know what I'm saying? Like, he go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Now your other producer too, uh, Kilo. Yeah, Kilo. Did, uh, Blood together, right? We did Blood, yeah. World Going Crazy. He actually did the whole Cabin Fever EP. Oh, yeah. yeah, he did that whole shit. Um, and we, me, him, and Jake, we actually got a EP on the way, so that shit gonna be crazy as well. Yeah. Man, since you brought up more love, let's mm -hmm. let's talk about expensive party music. Mm -hmm. Cause personally, to me, that's the best thing you've ever dropped. <laughs> hey, 
When I tell you, I was, I was personally mad at you because yeah. I don't feel like you pushed it how hard you should. I, I you. didn't. I didn't. You, hey, I did. did. You right. From from the intro, because mm -hmm. even the, the intro to that that album, that project, bro, is it's not a song. Mm -mm. You have someone talking. Uh, it was me. That. I just that pitched my talking? voice down, yeah. Yeah, hey, you hey, <laughs> talking about her, say, hey, nah, she, so she rolling on the drinks, and it's how yeah. we gonna we party to this bitch. And then you went crazy. Yeah. On every single song. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. So, what, what was happening around that time to make like, that type of music? What? Because the whole vibe is not. Usually you really be rapping, mm -hmm. but that one, it was like. Party music. You got. Funk, you got pop, you still mm -hmm. rapping, but it's like everything in one. Yeah, low key was. It was like funk mixed with like EDM, mixed with fucking pop, mixed with rap, mixed with, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of R&B type shit. Um, bro, at that time, I think I was just very unsure about where I was trying to go with my music um, and what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be and all that different type of shit. So, and that was I actually made Cabin Fever before I made that. I just dropped Cabin Fever after type shit. Um, but with expensive party music, I was really down, bro. And I feel like I might have been like a little bit depressed type shit. So I had to make some music that was the total opposite of depression. 